All right. We are back in Blender. Today we are going to make some Cuban link chains. There's a few videos about this. Uh, I'm going to just go from scratch. This will be a longer video probably, but let's get into it. First thing we need is a Cuban link. There's a few ways you can do this. I'm going to show you two different ways. First is to add in a curved circle. I'm in overhead view right now. Let's go into edit mode and we're going to press RY60. Grab this one, RY minus 60. Grab this one, RX minus 60. And grab this one, RX 60. So if we go into front view, we have this figure eight looking thing here. Now, if you go into your data properties here, geometry down to round and increase that, we start to get this link here. One of the important things to do is to make sure that you turn up this resolution. So the way I'm showing you right now is the janky way to do it, in my opinion. You could do it, you can fix it, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. But if you do it like this, it's very important to turn up your resolution to something like 64. 32, I guess, is the max. So 32. All right, so now we're going to uh, right-click this, and we're going to convert it to a mesh. Now we've got this mesh object here. Let's go into sculpt mode. Grab the box cut and cut the top. Cut the bottom. And there you go. You've got this kind of Cuban link, but you'll see there's some shading issues here at the bottom. This is part of why I don't like this. You can shade smooth and it looks like it fixed it pretty well, but obviously this is not the most correct way to do this in my opinion you can definitely end up with some shading issues all right so now we've got this link here um the way that i would check the sizing on it here is to go in add an array get it close and so it looks like it's way too thin right now so let's go in select everything hold alt s and scale it up so maybe move this over, look underneath. Yeah, that looks about right. Cool. Now we've got this uh, link here. All right, so that's one way to do it. And let me show you a different way to make a link here. You could also add in a cube. Or I'm sorry, a plane. Uh, and then a cube. Scale this down so that it's half of the plane. There we go. All right, we're going to go into edit mode, make a loop cut, bevel it, or, or uh, yeah, bevel it to about there, probably. Looks a little too big, so we're going to scale it a little bit on the Z. And let's grab these two faces here, extrude them down. Grab these two faces here and extrude them outward. And delete the faces. Alright, so now let's take all of this and all of this and scale it inward. Actually, let's grab these as well. Grab these. And scale that in. We can actually get rid of the plane now. I use it just for sizing. All right, we've got an okay looking link here. Go into modifiers, add a bevel to make it look a little bit cleaner, maybe. Sure, good enough. This doesn't need to be perfect. Obviously, when you're modeling your own link, you can get as perfect as you would like. Then we'll go in, add a mirror modifier. Oops. Grab everything, move it. Add clipping. Let's move it in. Let's 
You know what? We need to turn off this. There we go. There we go. All right, so we've got our link here. Let's apply the mirror modifier. Grab these maybe. Hide to inset. Extrude along faces, and we got a little spot for diamonds. RZ45. Apply the rotation. Add a array. And we can check here. Looks pretty decent. Looks decent enough. Alright. Anyway, so there's two different kind of link styles. Obviously, you can do a lot more with it, but that is not what the point of this video is. The point of this video is to show you how to do some real-time chain simulations like you saw in the intro. So, let's take this chain, let's take this and show you a few details. So one thing here is let's go up here and turn on our statistics and look at this. So currently this has uh, 2,823 vertices. Um, and when you start to like put that in a chain, it can become a lot if you're just instancing the geometry, like you're just repeating it, right? You, you, you don't want to repeat the geometry if you can, or I don't want to, I'm on a laptop. So, you know, anyways, uh, so let me explain how I deal with that. I will put in a plane, I'll scale it to the size of the link, apply that scale. Grab the link, grab the plane, hit control P and parent it to the object, right? So then we grab this plane and we call this, let's call this link one instance. If we go over here to the object properties, you have instancing. Click faces, click off viewport, click off render. So now what you have here is actually just a single face plane that is being, um, that is instancing the link on it. We can get this out of here and move it off to the side. And let's get into the actual chain simulation. So I'll add in a path, a curve path, right click it and convert it to a mesh. The reason I do this is because you can't apply cloth modifiers to curves, only to meshes. So it's a little bit difficult for you to get you know, you could just put in a single vert and extrude it along. That would be considered a mesh, but this is an easy way to do it. Just put in the curve line, convert it to a mesh, and now you have something you can use the cloth modifier with. So I'll go into it. I'll create three different vertex groups. First one, as always, pin group. Next one's going to be called L underscore hook. And the next one will be called right underscore hook. Let's apply both the ends to the pin group here. Go into front view, make sure we're doing this right. Let's grab just the left one, apply it to the left hook. Grab just the right one, apply it to the right hook. All right, now we need something to hook those onto, so let's add in two empty spheres, scale those way down. This one will be called L hook. Duplicate it and call this one, oops. Well, this one, right hook. All right, to make sure these are lined up properly, I'll go into edit mode on the line and select that cursor to selected, tab out of it, grab left hook, and selection to cursor. Do the same thing again for the right one, cursor to selected, tab out of it, grab the right hook, and selection to cursor. Perfect. All right, so now let's apply the modifiers we need. We need two hook modifiers. These need to be up above the cloth modifier. So let's add them first. Duplicate. First one's going to be left hook. And the vertex group is left hook. Next one will be right hook for the object and vertex group right hook. Cool. And then let's add in a cloth modifier. So we add in the cloth modifier, we go down to the cloth panel, let's up the steps to 15. Now one of the things with like chains and stuff and doing this is like 
a chain isn't obviously made out of cloth, so having it bend and stretch and all that is not how that would work in real life. Obviously, it's much more rigid. So to get that, I'll crank these all the way up to 50. I'll crank the bending to 50 as well. I don't touch the shearing. And then I also crank these to 50 on the dampening. That'll give you just a very chunky, um, not like stretchy or smooth. It, it, you'll see once we apply the, the links to it, but it's pretty important. So, uh, and then the last thing, obviously, we need to apply the pin group. Go down to shape, pin group, and then the pin group. If I hit play here, we've got this that's um, this kind of rope that's being suspended between the two hooks. So if I was to hit play, grab a hook, and move it around, we have this real-time hook thing. It can only go as far, right? It's going to stretch at this point, but in between them here, you've got this pretty free-flowing cloth animation. All right, so now let's turn this into a geometry node. I'm going to Make a split there, bring up the Jomini Tree Node Editor, and create a new one. We'll call it Necklace. And bring, oops, bring it up here so we can see what we're doing. All right, so the first thing is it's, it's more like you can, it, there are points here. You could just instance on points, but it's better to convert it back into a curve. So we're going to go Mesh to Curve. Then we're going to go Instance on Points. The instance we're going to use is this link one instance. So let's grab it and drag it in there. And it's an instance. So make sure you click as instance. Okay. And it is huge. So we're going to click on it. We're going to scale it and apply scale. Scale it way down. Apply scale. Actually, I can't even see it. So let's look way down. There we go. That looks more like a Cuban chain. Okay, cool. So now if we hit play, we've got the links on this cloth sim so that it looks like it's reacting more like a necklace, right? But we have a few issues. They're facing the wrong way and a couple other things here. So let's fix that. Go back into the chain and let me rename this so that things are clear here. All right, so we need to rotate it. So most of the time when you watch videos dealing with this, you'll see them put in a align Euler to vector, or now I think it's called a line rotation to vector. And that works, but I, I, it's not correct for this. I can't explain exactly why. I'm not that smart. I just play with Blender a lot. And this is the way that I have figured out to get a better more realistic rotation on your links when you're doing um, chain simulations like this. So instead of a line you load a vector, we're gonna put in a axis to rotation, all right? So the primary axis is gonna be the normal, and that'll flip it over here so that it's facing us, right? And the secondary axis is going to be the curve tangent, all right? So now, if I was to play this, and I, I'll show you the difference here. Actually, let's let's not play this yet. Let's do the old school way of um, align rotation to vector, and then you take the normal, right, and you get this oops. I broke it. I broke the sim already, boys. All right, let's play it. I have broken it. There we go. All right, so you'll see that you'll get this weird, it just doesn't rotate quite right when you do it like this. So you have these turning, like they're still following the normal of the, of the um, curve, but it's just not right, right? These are all turned the wrong direction. You can try to fix it by uh, 
Oops, let's go back into the chain path here. You could try to fix it by rotating each of them individually. So rotate, rotation. Go local and do it by the curve tangent. And that gets closer, right? It causes this to be a lot more realistic. But you'll still end up with these kind of overlapping issues. So that's why I do it this way. Go here, now we play the, again, I've broken it, but you'll notice now if you watch this, these are like perfectly reacting to the chain next to it. You'll never see them overlap. They're following exactly the curve in front of it. And you see that down at the bottom there. If I take this here and play it, you see how those, like obviously it gets a little bit weird right at the bottom but if you have motion blur going and stuff you're not going to notice that at all i'm not sure if you even notice it in the intros at all but it to me this feels like way closer to how i would think a cuban link chain would be moving and how the chain the links would react to each other anyways so if we go back let's fix this here Grab the hook. Oops. There's our two selected, and then go back and grab that. Two selected. Perfect. All right. So now we move this around, and you have this real time chain simulation that you can use that seems, to me at least, to act fairly realistic. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them or follow me on X and I will answer them on there. You can message me on there. Uh, again, this is something, this breaking thing only is happening because it's referencing it starting here. When you go to animate this, obviously, it won't be like that. You'll animate the uh, hooks wherever you want them and you'll get this real time, you know, uh, gravity thing going on with the rest of the chain so you can apply it to things uh i've if you want it to react to like a mesh let's say you have a character wearing it there's going to be a little bit more involved than just this you'll need to apply some sort of way for the collisions to happen uh, i'll probably make a video about that in the future there are some techniques already online about how to do it that i think are pretty good um but maybe it could be a little bit better. So maybe I'll release something in the future here. Anyways, uh, I will put up a screenshot of the node setup. So if you want to copy it, it's obviously very easy. But I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.